It is good to have you back. If you are just joining us, this is Firecrackers. And we are about to talk about the COP28 delegates. That is the one that Nigeria went with to Dubai. And then we also want to talk about managing Nigeria's resources. So uh, this um, trip, I'm using the word trip loosely now, yes. that Nigeria embarked upon. We had over a thousand delegates, although the federal government is saying that they are they're only responsible for 422 of the over 1,000 at point. But a lot of Nigerians still feel it is wasteful spending. Do you agree with that? I think I agree 100% that uh, we should not have that large number being sponsored by federal government. Because, okay, this is the 26th of this conference. We need to know how, what, what they have achieved from the first to the 27th, and what is they're attending, then what has been the achievement, what has been the feedback, then before sponsoring 422, whatever, uh, delegates. Okay, that is way too much. But I think, personally, the government also should know that it's not good for the office, offices. But right now, because of the challenges that we have with our economy, and when you sponsor such people, you are going to pay them extra code, you are going to pay them, they have flight tickets, they have hotels. So what the government need to do is to tell us, this is how much it costs us, taxpayers, to sponsor these people there. Maybe then they will now know. Nigeria, they, they will now feel the anger of Nigeria. If you have to spend such an amount of money to sponsor people to go and attend a conference, in this time of uh, virtual environment, can those people who are in Nigeria, can they attend? Virtually, okay? Why must they be there in person? 440, are they all going to attend and present papers or can they attend virtually? Can they employ, uh, explore the virtual environment for them in their offices at home and they can be part of the conference? Come on, there are better ways of doing things. Mm, definitely. Yeah. So going by especially the new, the first pers perspective of perhaps if it were to be virtual, yes. then it would have saved lots of resources. Yeah. And also talk about the aviation fuel. It is even going to to cost to from Nigeria over there, even from all over the world. If you are saying that we are trying to stop climate change, then the action of almost all countries on Earth moving to that destination, that is still a considerable amount of pollution to, to consider that is going to be inflicted on the environment. But another thing that has been argued is if it were really important for Nigeria to attend the, the COP28 meeting with that much delegate. But if we look at the impact that scientists have claimed is caused by climate change, because we have flood, we have torrential rainfall, we have a lot of disasters that are going on because the earth has warmed way more than necessary, which has been credited to the Industrial Revolution. Even with that, would you still say that it is not important for Nigeria to still go there and participate actively in that meeting? No, no one is uh, saying it's not important. I think what we are dealing with there is that the number of delegates being sponsored. Okay, the climate change uh, conference is very important because uh, if, if it's not, if our climate is not well managed, then it's going to, there's going to be a lot of drawback for us. Agriculturally, because we still depend on natural rain and all of that. We know that recently rain has become very staggered, very unreliable. And since our farmers still depend on natural rain, where there's no irrigation farming, there's no technology, it's not, bring, it's not being brought to the sector, you know, to improve uh, production. So we still, so we need to manage the environment, our climate, and that conference is definitely important. And because it offers the president and the top people there the all kinds of uh, networking opportunity to meet with other president, head of delegation of other countries, another agreement can be signed, another discussion. Because we know that even there, apart from the climate change, there are other discussions that the president was having with other head of state of other countries. So definitely at that level, is so important. But what we are saying is that do you need that number to attend that conference. Can the very important people the that need to be there be there, while others who are who can attend from Nigeria and they can attend virtually. And that way we can you know save resources and we can and Nigeria can see that okay these resources are being managed at that level and not being wasted. Because we have not seen so much 
of uh, benefit that we are seeing from other series of conferences that we attended on climate change, or it's not being communicated to us. So but what we are saying is that going forward, that number is too large. Definitely. Now, let us read from what Peter will be posted on his ex formerly Twitter platform. He said, in a twist of sad irony, let me congratulate the giant of Africa, Nigeria, for matching the great China with the same number of continents at COP28 in Dubai, while China's budget for 2024 is about $4 trillion, Nigeria's budget is about $33 billion. Do you think that it's the, okay? Well, a lot of people have mixed feelings when it comes to presidential candidates from the February 2023 election. Whenever they are weighing in in this present administration, some have blamed them for being harsh critics because if they were there, if they could do more than that or perhaps less than that, no one knows. But do you feel like his conditions that well because of this? things that they have said. Do you feel like it is valid enough for us to consider? Yes, I think uh, I read that uh, tweet and I know that, you know, if you look at the population of China, I think China is over a billion people. Yes. And we're just 200 and something million people. So if we're not going to match China with the delegation of the delegates that we have, you know, going for that conference. So we do not need, what Peter B just said, that we do not need that number. So that, because if we say, okay, uh, we are uh, five, maybe 20%, okay, of China population. So if China is sending that number of delegates, they will present 20% of that number from our country for that delegation. Because we know that most of the uh, program, the infrastructure project that we're doing in Nigeria, a lot of money we are borrowing from China. So we cannot equal them, you know, to say they are sending the same number to their conference and then we must send the same number. So it's way too large. Uh, and I don't think the benefit that we'll get from that conference uh, should maybe, if we line it up side by side with the amount that is spent, we we'll really see that we have managed our resources uh, prudently. So we need more project management of our resources because things are very difficult for Nigeria right now. And the government should not go and just behave as if uh, everything is okay. What on the street is they went on a jamboree, although, like you said, the, they have um, a lot of things to be benefited from attending the climate, the climate summit. So if we look at this administration so far, how would you score them so far with managing Nigeria's... We have abundant resources, but it is made, it is seen, it is made it seem to seem like it is limited. So how, let us just throw it open and ask that, how do you think they've been managing Nigeria's resources? Uh, number one, I don't think we have abundant resources. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's something that we keep talking about. We have abundant resources. Because even though you have abundant resources, management of resources are key. Okay, so if you have abundant resources and you are not able to manage it, or manage it efficiently, what is the value of that abundant resources to you? It has no value. So we need government to be more prudent, I was just discussing with someone today, and I said, uh, the greatest economy in the whole world today is the US economy. And it's managed by 15 cabinet members. And whether it's Republican or Democratic, that number does not increase. So why do we have 48 cabinet ministers in Nigeria? Okay? How do we have, in, in, uh, in Germany, we have 16 member cabinets. Germany has the strongest economy in Europe. So, if it takes 60 cabinet members to manage that economy, government in and government out, why do we always have this number? Why do we have 40 cabinet ministers? We have two ministers of defense, we have two ministers, minister of state, then another minister, you know. See, it just shows that we are not prudent in the management of our resources. Because we should not, I think, okay, our position say, because I have one minister per state. So we should not have more than 36 ministers based on our constitution that says a minister must represent a state. Maybe it's 37 and Abuja, right? We should not have more than that. So we should, because we borrowed this uh, democracy from the US, it's copy from, why can't we copy everything that makes it work there? Okay, why copy some and left some? Okay, so 
definitely we are not employing prudent management of our resources. And we do not have those resources in Abuja because we keep borrowing from uh, China, from all the multilateral agencies, you know, and we are, we are, our the debt is over hand. So even if you have those resources, and you are not managing them prudently, it will not deliver to people. That's what I can say. Okay, and some people have also opined that perhaps the reason Nigeria is always in debt in and out is because our government does not know how to do business. Some have opined that perhaps all these businesses should be left to capitalists, to be left to individuals who might be able to handle this better. Do you feel like, okay, that is, let's say, like copying, so to speak, what is obtainable in the U.S.? Do you feel like we might also benefit from that? Or maybe we should just really try a bunch of things and find out that which works best for us? Yes, we have been said, and I think I believe it, that government is not a good businessman. So business is better left in the private sector. But there are some aspects of social services that is best managed by government, mm -hmm. okay? Because you cannot, uh, Government is for the welfare of the people, for the welfare, the security, protection of life and property of the people. So there are some social services that is still being provided by government. Healthcare, education, you can't leave everything for the private sector. You are still, because the, the, the citizens still pay taxes, okay, and even the corporate uh, bodies also pay taxes. So those taxes have to be applied to social services that you will not expect the corporate sector to provide. Because if they provide it, it will not be affordable. So, but government is still saddled with no responsibility to provide so, those social services to the people. That's what government exists to do all over the world. Definitely. And uh, if we are looking at some of the sector that was privatized, like NNPC Limited, although the federal government still has some ounces of control in it, it when the when the uh, MDA appeared before the Senate, he said that, because this one has left a lot of people in shock, yes. that the refinery's purpose is not necessarily to reduce the cost of palm price, but rather to make Nigeria one of, well, oh, the recognizable, yes. yes. Sustain it, sustain it, to sustain yes, the price yes. ranking that they have now. Yes. That that's what they are, is uppermost. Sustainability of the private that they have now, not bringing it down. I also yes, listen to definitely. Yes, yeah, so and that's very sad because uh, I thought why the fuel price went up was well, because it was based on importation and subsidy payment by government. Because if they, they, we are not, uh, our local refineries are not producing, and so all the uh, fuel that we consume is imported, and so government have to subsidize. And government is not ready to subsidize again. Or government does not even have the money, and that when the local refineries start producing, there's a likelihood, there's that hope that the prices will come down. Now that has changed. You know, one thing in Nigeria is that whatever goes up, is this never come down. It's really prices. So I think what we are dealing with, if I understand what the man is saying, is that those prices may not necessarily come down, even with local production of this uh, of this uh, fuel. That but what they are going to do, what is about Muslim, what is the objective? is to make sure that they sustain those prices. Because even those prices are going up. Because most of the things that are maintaining are selling at the price that we know. When you go there, you know now. When you go to other places to buy, the prices are up. Even in Lagos, okay? Because you drive from this place, you know, they are not selling that one, not selling. You wonder, when you now look for a one where they are selling, you find out the prices are it's above 600. What I bought is a simple like 620 Naira per liter yesterday. Okay, much. so these prices are not coming down very soon. That's what he's saying. So I have to make up our mind. If it's not coming down, please let us maintain some sustainability so that we can plan. Yes, well, we sincerely hope, I'm sure a lot of Nigerians who's hoping that once the refineries start things good, return to some semblance of normalcy. Well, let us hope that that's why the fact that it is not the target, it, is, it still reflects. Because that is one of the things we are looking forward to, reduction in pump price. And perhaps it is going to come with drastic reduction in prices of food and services. So we thank you so much for sharing your thank thoughts you. and the opinion me. with us on the show. Thank you so much for being on Firecrackers.
And that's Dr. Felix Olori, that is a security expert and public affairs analyst. Once again, thank you so much for being on Fire Crackers. I'm grateful for having Unfortunately, this is where we'll be drawing the curtains close on today's episode of Firecrackers. Thank you so much for watching. I am sure you've learned a thing or two. And then, the most important one is keep supporting our Jairus military because from what we've been able to observe, they are trying to do their best for the safety and security of all Nigerians completely. So, see you same station next week. My name is Ereba Salako. So, have a great week ahead.